Today we've got an entitled parent story centered all around the Barbie and Oppenheimer movies. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, cousin was mad I didn't barbecue food without seasoning for her baby. On the weekend immediately after July 4th, I hosted a family barbecue. My slightly older cousin in her mid-30s had told me that she wasn't coming a week in advance. Then, about two hours before the event, she changes her mind and tells me she will be coming with her husband and her one and a half year old baby. This wasn't a problem because we bought enough food for there to be lots of leftover. While we were there, my husband and I were slaving away in front of three barbecues in the yard to cook for a group of 24 people and one baby. We didn't have time to take a break or go inside with everyone else. They were inside because it was raining. During this time, my cousin or her husband constantly came over to complain about our food. They were the only ones who complained the food was too salty. Everyone else who came over to speak with us loved and devoured the food. After the Wagyu tomahawks were served, my cousin came over again. This time her face was red and she was livid. It was red from anger and not drinking, she's a non-drinker. She started complaining that we should have known better that her baby couldn't eat such salty foods, and that we should have made separate food for them unseasoned. I told her that there was no way we could have done that. We already bought all the food we needed beforehand. Everything was seasoned or dry brined ahead of time. I suggested giving her a big bowl of water so she could try washing off any seasoning before feeding her baby, but she said that wasn't good enough. That's when her husband showed up and suggested that I go to the butcher and buy another tomahawk and come back. That way their daughter could also have some unseasoned. My husband said no, we weren't wasting time, gas, and money on a one and a half year old. Even if we did, she obviously would not have been able to finish an entire steak. I just don't understand what changed. She was never like this before she had her kid. Now she expects the world to revolve around her kid. Is this something that involuntarily happens to a large percentage of the new parents? I don't know if it unlocked some kind of entitled behavior that was stored within them, or if it was something that kind of emerged from both of the parents just trying to raise a kid together. But honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if going through something as stressful and as strenuous as trying to raise a child would lead to some kind of behavioral changes. I guess at the end of the day, although they're clearly being entitled, at the same time, they're also just trying to like make sure the best happens for their kid. So I don't know. Also, hi, I'm Steven. And if you guys enjoy these stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is advice on crazy mom who stalks me. Okay, I'm at my wits end. Now my mom, who has always been a super, super overprotective and helicopter parent, has I think just lost her mind at this point. It all started a little over two years ago. A guy I worked with and had a huge crush on finally asked me out. I was 24 at the time and still living with my parents and didn't have my own car. I was so, so excited to finally go out with him and of course I had to ask my mom because I was using her car at the time. She said no, I couldn't date him, that I couldn't date any guy for that matter. Now she had been like this with every guy I tried to see or date, but this was different because I really liked this guy and we had so much chemistry. She wouldn't let me use her car and started driving me to and from work just so she knew I was there and not at my coworker's house. So me and the guy started to secretly see each other for a few months. My mom had eventually let me use the car again and I would drive over to his house and spend some time with him after work. I could only be there until about 6.30 p.m. when my mom would text me and ask when I was going to be done with work and where I was. I got away with this for about a month when I tried to sneak to his place on my day off, telling my mom that we had a meeting at work that I had to go to. She ended up calling my workplace to ask if I was there. They obviously said no and that was it. My mom was blowing up my phone, furious and asking where I was and that she knew I was with my coworker somewhere. I was scared and told her I was with him with my dog at a baseball field by his apartment. When I got home, she threw a fit and threatened to kick me out of the house. A week later, I went back over to his place to hang out after work. Well, at about 6.30 when I was telling him that I should go because my mom was blowing up my phone, I looked out his upstairs window and saw my mom and sister in the parking lot by his house, looking for me. I was terrified because I know my mom. I had no choice but to leave his apartment and that's when she saw me. She flew into a rage and ran over to the apartment and started banging on his door and shouting at him. He was terrified of course and didn't answer the door. 
I was so mortified that I just got into the car and went home. To make this shorter, there ended up being three occasions where the guy I was seeing called the cops on my mom when she showed up to his place, ringing the doorbell demanding to see me. I ended up living with him for a week when I was so fed up and was looking for my own place. And when I did get my own place, the stalking didn't stop. I'm 26 now and she drives past my apartment sometimes to see if I'm here. She texts asking where I am all the time. About a month ago, my boyfriend, the same guy I've been talking about, were going to go out for some drinks when my mom came driving past his place, yelling out my name. He got so distraught over it that he broke up with me that night. He was so fed up with my mom stalking him, I was devastated. Two weeks go by and me and him finally talk it out. But he says he wants me to create some boundaries with my mother. He doesn't want to see her drive past his place anymore. I just don't know how to do it. I want my mom to leave me alone forever, but I can't stop her from driving past this place. If I stop all contact with her, it'll get so much worse. Please, I need advice on how to get my mom to just leave me the freak alone. To me, this seems like a very legitimate reason for OP and their boyfriend to go and file a restraining order. I know it sucks that you have to file a restraining order against your own mom, but family or not, they can't be going around doing this harassing you constantly. This next story is, give us free drinks or you're fired. I work at a small neighborhood coffee shop as a barista and cashier. I recently just turned 18 and I've been working there since I was 16. This happened a few days ago and it's actually probably one of the most traumatizing experiences I've ever had. Entitled dad, 50 or 60. Entitled mom, 50 or 60. And the son, 18 to 22. Setting the story, we just opened and I was waiting at the counter when Entitled Dad, Entitled Mom, and Son came in. Everything was normal. They ordered three hot chocolates, which is about $15 USD. This is when it got a little crazy. Entitled Dad said, $15 for three hot cocos? Is this a joke? There's no senior discount? I say, no sir, I'm very sorry, but we're too small to get a senior discount. $5 for a large cocoa is reasonable. I haven't made the drinks yet, so if you want smalls instead, it'll be $8. I gave Entitled Dad and Entitled Mom a warm smile while they looked mad. Entitled Mother bursted into a fit. This is disrespectful to elders. Her voice was insanely stern. I have PTSD, so I flinched at this. At least give us free small cocos. I was visibly shaking, but I was still kind. I say, we can't give you free drinks, I'm very sorry. The son says, I can pay the $15, it's fine. Entitled mother says, no, we're treating you. The dad says, give us the free drinks or you're fired. I have absolutely no idea how to deal with yelling, so I teared up but I kept being nice. I said I can't. Please don't yell at me. The mother says, this is disrespectful, where is your manager? Me, fully crying but still smiling, he's not working today. Son says, you're upsetting them, just let me pay. The son pushes the parents out of the way, pays 15, and I make the drinks. He says, thank you, I'm so sorry about this. Me, still not crying, but not as bad. It's fine, have a good day. Entitled dad and entitled mom gave me a glare as the three left. Obviously, this behavior is uncalled for, but if I went to a place and I ordered three hot chocolates and it was $15, I'd feel a bit ripped off too. But I'm the kind of person who would pay it, walk away, and go... You know, I probably just won't return for hot chocolates here in the future. Like a normal human being? This next story is an Entitled Aunt July edition. Been a few months since the last story about this aunt. Well, we all got together again for the 4th of July with the rest of the family. And as y'all might have come to expect from this selfish and entitled mother-son duo, it was nothing but a stress fest of my aunt being entitled on numerous fronts. When we reached my grand's house, Entitled Aunt and Cousin were there, along with both their dogs because, despite not even being able to properly train the devil dog, Entitled Aunt got herself another dog. A mix has some Lab Shepherd and we think Pitbull in her, so you know we'll need a lot of training that Entitled Aunt won't provide. Personally, I think she only adopted another dog because my family got a new puppy and she was jealous that our girl was getting all the attention for being the newest dog slash a puppy. The first? We had brought our own pupper with us, and Cousin immediately started begging to walk our dog. Which was a hard no. Cousin can hardly be trusted to walk his own dog. We're not trusting him with ours. 
We're out by the highway, no fence. Ain't no freaking way we're trusting cousin to not lose the leash. Entitled Aunt tried to convince my dad that it'll be fine. That cousin has plenty of experience walking their own dog. Experience I very much remember being my grand getting hurt in June because he let the leash go while on a walk in their new, who's already knee height, tackling her to the ground, and then she started getting huffy when they didn't get her way. Not even half an hour later, our dog is running around the house without her collar on. Cousin had put a leash on the collar and not the harness she was wearing and was going to walk her and she managed to get out of her collar and was running around thinking we were playing with her. Entitled Aunt immediately came to the defense claiming that it's not like Cousin was doing anything wrong, that he's a boy, it's fine if he walks our dog, and then tried to slap me with a, you're always walking our dog, like woman I'm never walking your dog by choice. You're always throwing him onto my lap or shoving his leash into my hand and demanding I look after him because you don't want to. She also tried to argue that it would have been our fault if our dog got loose anyway because she got out of her collar so easily. Like, no, that's why she has the harness on. She's an escape artist when it comes to collars. My grams took both cousin and entitled aunt aside and I figured that was that. We collared the dog back up and left her with my other cousin. Not Entitled Dance Kid, but she is kind of uncomfortably weird about him. Dogs to play with, while we all chatted outside. Entitled Dant and Cousin returned, and before long, Entitled Dant was talking about how she and Cousin were going on vacation. Going to take a whole week to go to this or that place, and then, rather than ask my dad or my mom, she turned to me and asked if I was going to house it and watch her devil dog for her. And not even a would I do this for her, but just the whole expectation that I was going to. Just her devil dog because she was taking the new dog with her on vacation. I said no and so Entitled Aunt hit me back with a hmph and a well you know OP, whenever you and your parents were out of town, I always watched your dogs. The entitlement to that, first of all, I was a little kid and had no say in that and the most my family did was a three-day camping trip every summer, which we always took the dogs with us on. We stopped doing that years ago, and we've only gone on like three or four multi-week trips that we couldn't bring our dogs with us on, which is nothing compared to Entitled Ants every other weekend camping and every few months of vacation thing she has going on. Second of all, she never house sat or babysat our dogs full-time like she demands of us, She just came in a couple of times a day to feed them and let them out and that was it. Half the time she wasn't even the one doing that. It was our gran who checked in on our dogs or stayed at our house. And lastly, the dogs we had at that time weren't anything like Devil Dog. One was just the biggest, most lovable idiot around, and the other, while somewhat aggressive, was nothing like Devil Dog. She only snapped if you tried to take her food away while eating, or tried to take a toy from her while she was playing. My grandma said she'd watch the devil dog, which didn't stop Entitled Aunt from just glaring at me throughout the night, but some health stuff came up for my gran, so shockingly, my folks and I've been watching the little monster since Monday, and for a dog with barely any teeth, he's got a strong bite. After that, it mostly went without any following issues, from her at least. Several times throughout the night, Cousin just got about his butt beat for how he was acting, which Entitled Dan of course tried to hand wave away as just boys being boys. Dude's almost 13, he's more than old enough to know that he doesn't point fireworks at people. I'm legitimately concerned about that 13 year old, pointing fireworks at people and then having it hand waved away. You don't downplay behavior like that, that's how they grow up to do even more harmful crap to people. That's how in a few years they end up landing themselves in juvie over something that they were never told is explicitly bad and wrong to do and raised to not do those kinds of things. This next story is Entitled Parents Make Lifeguards Work Heck. This story is from a few years back when I was still guarding in Australia. I'm still a lifeguard so I've had a lot of similar stories come up since but I'll try my best not to get confused. It was a completely normal work day for us, when the entitled parents, mom and dad, and their spawn, 5-year-old male, 8-year-old male, and 15-year-old female, rolled up at about 8 or 9 a.m. The first red flag was that they announced their presence. They went past our knock and emergencies only sign and knocked on our door. When I opened it, the mother just stepped into the room past me. She introduced herself and her husband by name, 
told us that they were on their dream vacation to my place of employment and asked us a few questions about our job. This may seem normal-ish to some, but this is a very busy beach by a big city and we already had around 7,000 to 9,000 people on the beach that morning. Now, while making conversation, she must have noticed that I was struggling a bit to go along with her thick, what I assume to be urban Tasmanian accent. I'm fluent in English and I can understand most accents, but it isn't my first language. So she remarked to one of my colleagues, wow, I mean, you just told me about all the teamwork in your job. Is it really that smart of an idea to hire some slur for immigrants that I'd rather not repeat? I see that she's not understanding me, so how is she not a hindrance in your communication? My colleagues were even more irritated after that and more or less told her to leave the tower, as it was for emergencies only. She scoffed, but did as told. Around midday, we received a call from a lady who had just witnessed another lady jump off the cliffs not too far from our beach. Unfortunately, that wasn't a rare call for us, since those cliffs are quite popular for ending things. Standard procedure, two lifeguards retrieved the lady, while me and another one waited on shore with medical equipment to start CPR. It was a very gory scene, and unfortunately, the lady didn't make it. When we handed her over to the paramedics and police, we had a lot of blood on us. I remember I had it all up and down the sleeves of my uniform and it was even seeping into the latex gloves I was wearing. Sometimes we can resolve situations like this without members of the public noticing, but this time we couldn't, even though we were in a pretty remote part of the beach. We had a few people crowd around us and when we walked back to our tower, we spotted the entitled mom closing in with her kids to check out what happened. I advised her that especially her younger boys really shouldn't see what was going on. When she saw us, she screeched, Ew, is that blood on you? Why are you running around like this? I told her yes, hence why her kids shouldn't go back there. She then went on a rant about how disrespectful it was that I dared to tell her what she should and shouldn't do with her kids, and how she would report the entire crew working that day to the city council. Mind you, she said the wrong council even though the council we work for is literally printed on our shirts. We were all pretty mentally and physically drained from the incident before, so we just left it at that. Late afternoon, I encountered Entitled Dad again. A colleague and I were monitoring a rip current that had just started pulling extremely hard and was giving a lot of swimmers a hard time. We both switched off doing a couple of rescues, but then my colleague eventually went out to direct an entire cluster of about 10 people who were still swimming fine and just couldn't get out of the rip, back to shore. I was standing on the back of our ATV and monitored the situation, A, for any other swimmers who might need more urgent assistance, and B, in case my colleague got overwhelmed. That's when I felt a hand way too low down my back. I turned around to see Entitled Dad creepily smiling at me. I told him to back off, to which he responded, Geez, pretty lady. All right, let me just talk to you. As a female lifeguard, I'm used to men overstepping boundaries, but he was just straight up giving me the creeps. I was just happy that he wasn't touching me anymore, so I turned back to the water and tuned him out. But I remember he was talking something about being a woman amongst so many men and how me working such a physical job was an absolute waste, especially since I couldn't possibly complete it to the same level men could. When I could feel his hands back on my legs again, I radioed my head guard in the tower to call the cops, since this guy was being a massive creep. As soon as the word cops fell, he fully slapped the back of my thigh and started hurling all sorts of profanities at me. I then found out that the cops were already on their way. The entitled parents and their youngest son turned up at the tower, demanding to take pictures with some of our lifeguards and equipment just before that. When that request was denied, he kicked one of our ATVs and broke a rescue tube, and then when they were walking away, he shoved a young lady holding a baby out of anger. That's when I couldn't leave him leave the beach anymore. So I called for backup and we found the family just as they were packing up their stuff. We have a couple holding techniques, and luckily we were able to hold them on the beach until the cops showed up. The husband was arrested, and the mom was given an exclusion order from the beach. The mom was throwing an absolute tantrum, screaming and crying about their ruined holiday, until she and her kids were ushered away too. How disgusting do you have to be to not only do this behavior, 
but to do it when there's clearly an emergency situation going on. Let me tell you, I know from experience a rip current is not something you mess around with. Everybody in that water is incredibly lucky that there were multiple lifeguards there to help out. I had in the past an extremely close relative who got caught in a rip current and they're no longer with us. So for this guy to be creeping around and distracting lifeguards while they're trying to help all these people who literally can't get out of the water that are trying to, they deserved every little bit of at least being taken to the station. Hopefully they were given some kind of fine at the very least as well. Our next story is Entitled Mother Takes Her Kid to Barbie and Leaves Her Alone to Watch Oppenheimer Instead. This started about two days when I was working the night shift at my local movie cinema to pay for college tuition. I was working the night shift at the snack stand and there's a long butt line because of Barbenheimer. As I'm taking orders and handing out popcorn, I was excited to watch the films when I got my day off. Even went as far as dyeing my hair blonde and wearing a pink slap watch when my next customers walk to me. I say, what can I get you tonight? The entitled mother says the largest popcorn you have and a kid size along with a large soda and a bag of M&Ms. I say your total will be $26. She says that's a stupid amount for popcorn and candy. Coworker says ma'am, our large popcorn goes for almost $10 and a kid's pack is $9 including the soda and candy adds up to $5 plus tax. Entitled mother takes the card out while mumbling, this is a robbery. Entitled Mother's kid takes the popcorn and candy as she and Entitled Mother head to the screening. Cut to about two hours later, it's almost 10.30 when people leave the Barbie screening. I watch them leave as I'm cleaning the stand, ready to pack up and leave, when I see the same girl wandering around looking lost as I leave the counter and slowly walk to her. I say, excuse me, but where's your mom? The girl looks about six or seven and says nothing as I tell my coworker to check the bathroom. As she checks and comes back saying that it's empty, now I'm thinking, did this woman just leave without her child? I then call one of the ushers over and tell them to check the other screenings. As he searches and then later, as I watch over the girl, I hear the audience yell and shout as they leave Oppenheimer about a half hour early as a guard comes out dragging Entitled Mother by her arm as she yells about suing the heck out of the theater staff for assault. As she looks at me and yells, get away from my child you gay F slur. Yes, she thought I was gay because of my hair dye and pink watch. The guard says, ma'am, you left your child alone. Usher says, and you never bought a ticket for that film. He was referring to Oppenheimer. Entitled Mother then tries to grab her child but is held back by the guard as the usher calls 911. I had to stay another hour just to give my statement to the police who had to call the kid's dad to pick them up as Entitled Mother was arrested for endangering a child and abandonment of a child. We also banned her from the place as the film was forced to stop early due to Entitled Mother refusing to leave. So we gave everyone who attended, minus Entitled Mother, refunds and 5% off their next movie ticket. If Entitled Mother was a doll, I'd make her into a weird Barbie. Not a jail cell Barbie? Not a parent of the year Barbie? Not a why don't my kids ever talk to me anymore senior Barbie? Because I could see them fitting all those roles awfully well. Our next story is my very religious mother thinks I'm trans and I'm not. What do I do? My mom thinks I'm trans. She's never exactly said it to my face, but it's very hinted. She thinks it's because I'm masculine in her eyes. I can't do this anymore. I can't even wear god dang clothes I feel comfortable in because they're loose and she thinks I'm trying to hide my features. Heck, I'm not allowed to even wear plain shirts because that's what boys wear. Every time I choose my clothes, it always ends with me crying because my mom yells at me for not wearing the clothes she likes. When I get mad at her for this, she says, Don't think I don't know what you're trying to do, you're trying to act like a boy. I'm not even allowed to play sports just because it's masculine, even though it's something I enjoy. I can't even sit comfortably because apparently the way I sit isn't ladylike. She thinks all girls like pink and gets mad when I say I don't like it. My mom is very homophobic and religious and I'm already the least favorite, so her thinking I'm trans does not help my situation. I really don't know what I can do to prove to her I'm not trans just because I'm masculine in her eyes. I've tried to wear clothing with designs. I haven't played sports for a while. I've tried to wear a lot more pink despite not liking the color that much. And when I catch myself in a not ladylike position, I fix it. 
Yet after all I try to do, after stripping myself of everything I like for her to like me better and not think I'm trans, she still thinks I am. I can't do this anymore. I think considering OP has literally tried conforming more to what she wants and realizing it wasn't enough, unless OP does everything exactly the way she wants and lets her direct everything, and even then it probably still won't be enough, it won't be enough. It sucks to have to put up with that behavior, but as soon as OP stops trying to live life for somebody else and just lives the life that they want in the comfort that they know, they'll be a lot happier. This next story is Entitled Grandparent. So this happened last night. I'm in a very complicated place with my ex-husband and our kids. My oldest has ASD, pathological demand avoidance, and very violent. So for the safety of our younger two, CPS made me give custody to my ex-husband. So summer is here and the ex decided to override my son coming down for two weeks and has sent him down for two months. X and my son live on the east coast, I'm west, so son is staying with his Opie and Oma till the two weeks I can have him at my house. We live close to Omi and Opie, my ex-in-laws, my ex-brother-in-law lives there too. So last night at 7.20, I got a call from my son. He was very upset and I hear his Omi and the uncle screaming in the background. Omi is old lady racist and uncle reminds me of the trench coat guys who shut up that school in the USA. Thank God I'm in Canada and he can't have access to guns. I can barely make out what's going on. I understand, can I come over and mad at me, social media, and Asian. So I tell him yes. As he was getting very upset and overwhelmed and was hoping to stop him from exploding and getting violent, as his Oma has mitonic muscular dystrophy. Well, he gets here, and he gives me a big hug and melts down. The story comes out that his uncle came home, and uncle and Oma started debating and arguing about things, got a racist, and then told my son that Asian is a place, not an ethnicity. And he was very overwhelmed, and the fighting is stressing him out. He said Opie was hanging out and was going to wait for him to come home, as he calms things down. A few hours go by, I'm on my VR, and hear him call his Oma, asking for Opie to call when he gets in, then yelling. I get off and he explains his Oma told him that no, that she won't get Opie to call him. So I calm down, wait about 20 minutes and call Oma slash Opie myself. Opie is in the shower. I ask Oma to get Opie to call me back. She says she can't guarantee she'll tell him. I tell her that kiddo has camped this morning and tell her again he needs to call me back. She gets ticked with me. I get a call from Opie and explain what happened, that my son can stay here but he needs to talk to his wife, as telling my 15 year old son that she won't pass a message on to call him is not okay. He is astonished and confused and said he called me back. I told him that my son called and his wife refused to pass on the message. He got shocked and said no that can't be. Then I hear Omi in the background saying, Oh yeah, grandson called for you. Now I've barely slept as I've been on the couch all night making sure all the kids are safe. Any tips on dealing with racist grandparents? Oma and uncle really go to town on a few races and immigrants, and that is truly funny as they are immigrants themselves. I mean, if you can help it, I would honestly say like, put down some clear boundaries and tell them about it like it's one thing for them to have their beliefs and whatnot and you know hey you can't change their mind necessarily but you're not going to subject your kids to being around that kind of stuff and if they can't at least keep it quiet when they're around then i think it's for the best that you make sure the kids aren't exposed to that stuff but with that being said that's all the time we have for today now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.